don't know me, I know most of you in this room, um, I'm Cindy Ripple, and I'm a Rockwell product specialist. Some of you may know me in my former role as a software, but I know uh, Will and I kind of split the state doing both software, PLCs, HMIs, so on and so forth. So, um, First thing I'm going to talk about is the um, panel view standard migration to a panel view plus, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about panel view, the migration between panel view plus 5.1 version the 6.1 version, um, what should I say, that's not really a migration, but there is some, some uh, things you need to consider when going between those two platforms, because there was a hardware change in 6.7, so I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, the panel view standard went into the Silver Series in January of 2011, and will have its Silver End date, which is this date right here, where it goes to discontinued at the end of this year. Does anybody have any panel view standards in their facility? <laughs> 550s? Okay, good. T600s. Yeah, so again, when it goes to discontinued, it means there no, you will not be able to purchase any new product, um, but they will be supported um, and repairable for another five to seven years based on availability. But this product's been out since 1993, so it's 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 almost been 20 years. It just can't be. It's been 20 years since 1993. Um, and this is <laughs> can't be, can it? It just seems like yesterday. Yeah, and I'm only 20 still, so. <laughs> um, I just sort of talked about it that again, there's some options. Once it goes into discontinued, you can get it remanufactured, and you can send it in and have it redone. You can get an advanced exchange, which is a 24-hour replacement. But basically, you're getting remanufactured out of the repair loop, or you can do a direct replacement, which only until 2012. At the end of this year, there'll be no more new. And then the migration option is to go to Panel View Plus. Um, it's, you know, I say easy as one, two, three, but it actually is a fairly <coughs> easy migration between the two products. Um, about 80% of the time, um, there, there is no further modification required. And I'd actually say I've seen it higher than that. I, I think 80 is a very, very conservative. It's a, used generally a pretty um, uh, smooth transition between the two products. Because uh, Factory Talk View ME, which is the, the programming for the Panel View Plus, um, was based on Panel Builder 32 and RS View 32. So it, it, it came out of that product. So there's a lot of similarities between the products. Will the panel view plus run on DH40? We'll get into that in a moment. <laughs> <coughs> um, one of the nice things is that they've kept the, the, your panel cutouts are the same. So when you have a replacement, the 550 to the 600 are either 400 or 600 touch replacement. Your um, 550 can also go to 600. So there, there's various options. Um, but they kept the cutouts the same. And there are some few cases where it's not quite, but we have adapter plates. So we, they, they have thought ahead of that and made it fairly easy for the, the actual physical replacement. Um, some of the considerations, I mean, OEM, we don't have any OEMs in here today. I think we found out system integrators. Um, when you move up, there's new features, new capabilities, improved performance, diagnostics. Um, you're gonna maximize the design of the machine. Um, Again, we've sort of gone through all these. There's, there's a lot of benefits to moving towards newer technology, of which you'll be able to buy a replacement if you need it after the end of this year. Um, one of the nice things that there is a migration panel builder, um, a a migration guide that uh, gives you the guidelines and the procedures, and I believe it also has in there. You can look at part numbers and look at the corresponding. Um, for those who want to write that down, it's 2711PAP001A. Um, if you're going to search the, uh, the literature, just put that first part on. Don't put the EN-P, and it will get you right to it. So if you want to search the literature the database to get the migration guide, um, it's very good. And again, I believe it has in there whether you need adapters, so on and so forth. So it steps you right through and gives you some procedures for, for migrating. By the way, does anybody have any panel view standards that are dim? Like an old yeah. CRT or anything like that? Got a couple. 
I was just, just, just asking. Or, yeah, I can't see him in daylight. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's hard to mm -hmm. I tap to back. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Um, again, we have some, some uh, things to consider in your migration. There is a step forward program, again, uh, we, they talked about step forward earlier that there you can trade in your old one to get a certain discount on purchasing a new panel view plus um, we have the literature library that again has some some real good uh, migration guide for you that helps you pick out part numbers gives you uh, details and so on and so forth and also, as always Rockwell has on-site conversion services as there's many of our system integrators too they're sitting right here that they could provide these services as well on a local basis um, just some clarification, um, most Panel Builder 32 um, and Panel View Standard, Panel Builder 32 being the um, development software for the Panel View Standard, nearly every one of the um, objects convert. Again, because, and that comes because RSView Machine Edition was based on Panel Builder 32. Do you know which ones don't convert? Um, no. I think I, I can get you a listing of that. I don't the know ones that you have, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to put it in a box. Yeah, it's everything you have. Right? <laughs> um, the DeviceNet, ControlNet, DH+, DH45, and Remote I.O. Are, can migrate to a 4 or 600. That's your question. You asked about DH. DH+, DH45, ControlNet can go to the new panel view 6 version um, of course Ethernet and DF1 are also convertible but what you see is not on there is remote IO and device net are a kind of a sticky situation if you have either one of those if we you have remote IO we need to talk yeah that's a that's a need to talk yeah that, that it, I'll kid you not that the remote IO is the most difficult migration yeah, there's 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 the most work involved in that migration. If you have any of these other ones, it's a little bit easier. Device net is a little bit of work, but probably the most work for migration is if you're using remote I/O. Um, I think we already talked about the the cutouts are compatible. Um, the, if you have the old panel, um, the three or the three micro, the really really small ones, you can use a um, a panel view plus 400, but probably for those. A panel view component, our, our lower end panel views. That's not the panel view plus. If you're familiar, our low end panel view components that we don't require any software. The program's done right on it. Might be the best conversion in those cases. So there is is no replacement available there. There's no conversion. I, I don't believe there's any conversion, but I'm not 100 percent sure on that. From a um, 300 to a uh, panel view component, which again is a low end, low cost, low functionality. It's not the panel view plus. But there's definitely a conversion if you want to go to the 400 for those two. Um, again, there's a lot of migration information available. Um, if you want, if any of you, and I have a couple links in this this program to the migration, if anybody wants a copy of my presentations, you know, give me a card and I'll get it, and then you'll have these links to the information. So um, that probably, that, takes you quickly through, I only have 15 minutes, through the um, panel view standard, spin of view plus, keeping in mind that it's a pretty smooth migration. Um, there's generally um, pretty easy to go. And I think you can probably get that, uh, that information link will give you the exceptions. There's, I'm sure there's information in that program guide, the migration guide, but we can make sure you get that information. Any questions before I move on to the 5.1 to, to 6.1 conversion? Uh, panel View Plus and Panel View Plus CE, size 7 to 1500, went into Silver Series January 11th, the same time as standard. That's version 5.1. We now have a new version 6.0. Uh, six, well, it's actually at 6.1 now. Um, and the reason that it's, it's called Silver Series, you know, usually when we just move up a version number, you're like, oh, you know, you don't Silver Series the last version number. But what's going on here is that the 6.0, there was a hardware change in the Panel View Plus. So what that means, uh, sorry, just got distracted by Ted. Um, what that means is you cannot take a Panel View version 6.0 or 6.1 and flash it backwards 
a 6-1 can go to a 6-0, but you can't take a 6-0 hardware and flash it back to a 5-0 a or a 5-1 or a 4 or a 3 or whatever you happen to do. So there's a distinct breakpoint there. So you need to be cognizant of that. Um, I mean, you can bring the program forward and download it to a 6-1, but there's some, again, there's some consideration. So that's why the 7 and above, 4 and the 6 are not obsolete. Or, sorry, use the right terms. Um, but all of the 7 and above, both the regular and the CE version, will go into the um, discontinued at the end of this year. What we've come up with is, again, the panel view 6, a better view into your machine. Basically, it's faster, it has more, um, more memory, and it's opened up a lot, too. With, with some things that were only available in um, the panel, if you're familiar with the panel view plus CE, if you're not the panel view plus CE, what it did is it opened up the CE operating system behind a panel view plus and allowed you to run programs that run in a Microsoft Windows CE, like viewers and so on. But the 6.0, we've opened up, the, there's now standard and extended. There's not panel view plus and panel view plus CE. There's standard and extended. In standard, does not completely open up the CE operating system behind it, but what it does open up that makes the functionality really extend that much more is it allows you to do ActiveXs. And if you're not familiar with ActiveXs, there are little pieces of code that can add functionality to your panel view program, such as we have, and I have a list of some ActiveXs I'll show you in, in a moment, but you can add a Cognex Vision ActiveX. It will give you, you know, vision system on your um, panel view. We have some Trending, the allow you to trend to um, CSVs, which is something you couldn't do as a standard panel view plus before. We have some recipes that allow you to save recipes in, uh, again, CSV files. So it, having that standard opening up the act ActiveX, it allows a PDF viewer. So if you want to put some documentation in it. So that's the standard version. And then there's the extended version of um, panel view plus six, which is equivalent to the old C. CE version, which it opens up the CE operating system behind it and allows you to do other uh, viewers, so on and so forth. Um, again, this is just sort of reiterates what I just said. This is this is the functionality you had in the old panel view, the old panel view plus CE. So that's versions 5.1, and this is what you get from here up. Is what you get in the standard, and the extended adds the um, <coughs> viewers video playbacks, Internet Explorer, remote desktop services. So, but it adds, it opens <coughs> up the Windows CE. But you get quite a, the, quite a bit more with the new Panel View Plus 6. So you can take one of your older programs and bring it up to a 6, but I'm just saying if you don't want to bring it up to a version 6, you can't flash a 6 version backwards. Um, this is some of the ActiveXs that are available on the Rockwell website. Again, I mentioned some of them. Um, data Store Plus that allows you to log data to a .csv file. Um, program Launcher, Web Browser, a recipe that allows you to create recipes in a CSV file. So it has really extended that capability quite a bit. <sighs> okay, so kind of taking us off into a, a new direction, the um, Factory Talk View ME, which is which is, I better hurry then. <laughs> I just got the five minute warning. Um, Factory Talk View ME version 6.1 was the first one that, that became available on Windows 7 64 bit. 6.0 had 32 bit. So they fixed the RSView Enterprise. RSView, yes, which is now Factory Talk View, Studio, what have you. The RSView Enterprise was that core of Factory Yes, and it now runs on, yes. Yes, the version 6.1 has a, you're right, I'm the RS Links. You said RS View, that's why I'm yeah. Even the RS Links and Right, that's what But with that, and I don't want to throw a lot of confusion in here, I'm not going to, that what we, we had, what we had a 32-bit um, a operating, um, in the 32-bit we used something underneath called the Wacom database. And when we went to 6.1, 64-bit, this database and the underlying information of your application 
did not go to a 64 bit, so we changed to SQL. And that's kind of something under the hood. You don't necessarily need to do that. But what it is, I just wanted to make aware of some of the challenges that there is some challenges um, for especially those of you who have older versions. And I'm going to skip through some slides really and kind of get to the meat of what the challenges are. So it's now like a couple of minutes. Basically, if you take a older version that was created, so a 5.1 PLD Plus, you can do, if you're on a 32-bit operating system, you can do anything you want to. There's a little bit of, when moving to the 64, is that if you have, when you need to open a project that was created in 5.1, and you're on a 64-bit operating system on your computer that you're going to do the work on the application, you need to either convert it in a 32-bit machine, or we have a legacy tag conversion tool, free of charge, that will convert that underlying stuff for you. So again, I'm not going to get into this a lot of technical, but I just wanted you to make aware, if you have older systems and you're moving to 6.1, the latest studio, there are some issues there. Um, if you bring something into 6.1 and need to create, because you're still maintaining that old 5.1 uh, panel view plus, you can create the MER, which is the runtime file, to be downloaded the panel view. But it, you can't make it so that it can, somebody can suck it out and create it if you're familiar. You can go in 5.1 or above, you could take a runtime file and create a development file out of it. Um, if you bring it, if you're using a 64-bit system, the only way you can create, you can create those runtime files, but they can't ever be converted backwards. There's, there's, there's some issues there. Not issues, it's just, it's because of a change of that under the hood stuff. So again, I'm not gonna go into this a lot, and if you want my, the, these, and I've got more information on this, but basically, I guess it's just a cautionary tale. If you're using a 64-bit operating system on your computer that you're going to do development for five, one or earlier, there are some considerations. Um, they're documented, so there's document. These are documented features. Features. Yeah, no, this is all. This is all documented. It's, it's, it, it was. It was something beyond our control because under the hood, we were using one technology that was not ported to 64 bit. So we had to change the technology under the hood. So if you do an install of Factory Time View Studio ME now, <coughs> it's going to be installing an SQL database underneath the hood, part of your install. So um, again, the tool that I mentioned, if you, if you do need to convert to a 64-bit, is um, available on the Rockwell Knowledge Base, or call any one of us, we can get it for you as well. Um, you can use the legacy tag to versions back to 3.2. If you have something older than that, you need to upgrade anyway because it was a, a new product that, as we said earlier, they had some, some undocumented features in it. Um, you can convert um, RSU32 and Panel Builder32 apps with this conversion tool. Uh, View32 conversion only to SE, though. You're not going to take a 32 and bring it to an ME. So just, so just you know. And it can do, um, you can do the project separately or you can do a mass conversion if you have a bunch of them as well. So There are some options um, if, you, if you don't want to use a 64-bit. You can run a 32-bit option in your XP mode of Windows 7 and it will share the license. I have that on my computer that I have older, the older version in my XP mode of Windows 7 and I share the license with, on my base mode. We can help you do that if that's something. And there's also, um, just note that the XP mode should not be ever used for runtime applications. Um, and Or another option is to use virtualization uh, or a separate 32-bit. Virtualization being something as VMware you could run it on that, which is a, basically creates a virtual computer. Um, there is some support for virtualization and runtime systems, but very limited. So again, usually virtualization used for development only. And that's, I think I made my five minutes. Are there any questions? I ran through that kind of quickly.